shit. Like when they put that Christmas album out, I remember Antonio Reed start calling me saying, hey, start showing me the charts. Look, look at your record. I said, okay, what that means? See, see, now I say I say it's on 20, now it's at 16. Next week, now it's at 12, 12. You got me geeked up on it. I'm coming back every week like, where is it? <laughs> where is it? Where is it now? Tall boy. Yo, yo, what up? This is Rico Wade, Organized Noise Dungeon Family. You, you listening to The Formula with Tall Boy and Company. It's Tall Boy Experience. We're live at the Rialto Theater for the Organized Noise celebration, um, the, the, the honoring of uh, you guys. Uh, how you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's just, um, we really, just a part of the Elevate. Part of the Elevate, something that the city of Atlanta doing. We started off with the art gallery, with the, um, with the, which, the, which is still open, the art exhibit. They had the block party this weekend with B.O.B. them. It's like, and now we just um, trying to round, we at Georgia State at the Rialto Theater trying to round it off with a little knowledge, a little knowledge explaining the history of organized noise and Dungeon Family, answering questions, a Q&A for the people. What was that one defining moment for you uh, to put organized noise together? Well, um, you, uh, I mean, being very honest, it was, probably, it was probably more than one, but like, of course, hearing players ball on the radio for the first time and feeling like people responded to it, but then, Later on in our career, when Waterfalls became the biggest record in the country, and people were just really treating us like we were, um, like we were some real, real geniuses, and we were just some kids who loved music, and we were just trying to do our best. I mean, uh, we had just signed, Outkast made, maybe just signed a deal in August. Just signed a record deal, in August of 93. He calls me in September, maybe I'll say, hey, we doing a um, Christmas album for the, for, the, for the label. Matter of fact, the year before that, we might have did a Christmas song for TLC. Or did we do this Christmas? Same album. The same album, okay. So he said we gotta do a Christmas album or whatever, but I'm gonna need something from Outkast, because they're on the label now. Right, right. Because they signed to the label, like he gave me the whole speech. You know, they signed to the label, so I'm gonna need them on the album. I said, I said, you know what, I'm ready to be rocking with the Christmas right now, LA. He's like, I know, but they on the label. <laughs> so what you gonna do? So for me, it was like a challenge. It was, I wasn't thinking about the music now. We didn't get to the part where, where, where he pulled off miraculously. <laughs> and he pulled, I'm saying like, because we all finagle stuff, but I had to first of all get us in the studio excited to do it. <laughs> I, I'm, at, I'm talking to L.A. Reed, so I come back to the house. Hey, y'all, we got to go in the studio. We got to work on a song for the, um, you know, for the face Christmas album. <laughs> for Christmas album? I thought, we no Christmas I, I said, I know. That's how we going to do it. That's how we going to do it. Ain't no Christmas in the ain't ghetto. No, ain't no cri That's how we going to do it. Socks and draws. That's what we going to call it. Socks and draws. That's all we get. I said, what you get? What you get for Christmas? Because if you're you going to learn, if y'all ain't learned by now, your, your mama going to stop buying stuff. All you going to get is socks and draws. About, about 15, 16, 17. Socks and draws. That's all you going to get. So I'm like, let's call it that. So me and Sleepy, we in the studio working on a vibe with Big and Dre. Socks and draws. Ray called, he had another studio session with this group that we're working on for Pell Boost, because she helped us out. We done kind of left her and went to LA, but she got this group trip drop. And she was like, she was like, um, so Ray was in the studio with them, working on the beat. Ray called me, because at this time we got one car, we sharing one car. He called me, I go to the studio to pick him up to help him pack up the equipment. He said, before I pack up, I want you to hear this, Rick. I said, oh shit, but that's player, that, I, I ain't even say player's ball. That's outcast. That beat, whatever me and Sleepy doing is not that beat. Right. We gonna take. So we took. We immediately took that beat. Went to the studio. I mean, went, went back to the studio. Turned it on, and we had a sample at the beginning of it when these dudes was talking, and they was like, um, "Yeah, man, you know all the players. You know it's a convention, man. We got all the players. just talking." But at, a hustlers we all, convention. A hustlers convention. But we had already just went through a thing with parental advisory with sample clearances. The group before them to where they said. Yeah, whatever money left in the budget is y'all's. They say, we see like about 120 some thousand here. I said, for real? They said, first we gotta clear the samples though. I said, well shit, clear the samples. Then we ended up with like 10, 15,000. <laughs> we ain't using samples, no more. <laughs> like then, we got it. You gotta tell us no more. They said, this is gonna be our money, that you gotta pay for the samples first? Okay, now we got no money. I said, okay. No more of that. So as soon as we went in with Outkast and we had the sample plan at the beginning, it set the tone. It said, oh, we want that. We ain't gonna use that. Take that out. I, I, I'm gonna do it. 
Man, all the players, all the hustlers, man, 770 Ville, L Dog, them but them lax. I'm talking about a black man heavy. Just like that. I went in, and then he dropped the hook, and it was over, man. Yeah, the time I heard him say, all the players, I was like, oh my God, that's it, Rick. All the players came from far and wide. Oh my God, that's it, folks. So, you know, we knew we had something special right then. And we literally did it just like that. It was off the energy of, of like, a good song. This is what hip-hop does. It was a beat, because we ain't here trying to come up with a song, and it was dope. But you want it to be better than what it is. You want it to be the best it can be. And for him to be in a team, for him to be working on something totally different, to not be there, let's bring that sound there and be like, let's take all our ideas and put it on this vibe. And... And man, it's a blessing, man, because um, like you said, Players Ball was on a Christmas album, but um, it was the only song on that Christmas album that like, when they put that Christmas album out, I remember Antonio Reed started calling me saying, hey, start showing me the charts. Look, look at your record. I said, okay, what that mean? See, see, now I say it's on 20, now it's at 16. Next week, Nan said 12, 12. You got me geeked up on it. I'm coming back every week like, where is it? <laughs> where is it? Where is it now? And it kept going. Now it was January. Christmas was over. He said, the record's still climbing. Can you go in and do another version of the record and take Christmas Day out? Then it became all day and day or whatever. But the record ended up going gold. It ended up becoming a number one record for, for Outkast. And it, and it pushed the button on the album because it, he literally was like, your single working. Now we need an album. Like January, you, your album had to come out 90 days from today. Like, like right now. So you got 90 days to give me your best work. So we had to go do um, all of them. Southern Playlistic, Crumbling Herb, right. Get Up, Get Out, Hooty Who. Every song we did, we did within that time frame. And we knew that Players Balls was, was the hit. So we kind of wanted to make sure we gave you something else like that. But we didn't want it to just be sleepy singing on every Big Boy and Dre song. So it was almost like we had, so that's where, when people talk about us, or like, man, organized noise, man, organized noise, it was really, we really did work hard. It, it, we worked hard to make it look easy. We, it, it wasn't Big and Dre thinking about making sure this song didn't sound like that song, or making sure they had something different. It was us, because we had already put an album out that, that that's just what happened to fail. We had already kind of pushed our careers to the side so we could be, so we could make sure, so we had somebody paying super attention to yours or whatever, like, and, um, and it, was out, it, it was signed to us. It was our project, so, when people talk about Outkast, or if I, when I see what 3,000, CeeLo, if I see when I see what's big, when I see what it means, it makes all that time worth it. Almost like right. I, I don't have a problem with preaching that to somebody else. There's nothing wrong with getting behind somebody and being and, and like, but not to do it because you're forced to do it because you want to, because right. we wanted to, we wanted to, and for us it worked out, man. We and even after that, when we did Waterfalls for TLC, TLC wasn't our group. That was a group Dallas Austin worked on all the time. We gave them one song at the time, it ended up being the biggest song of their career. But it was based on the outcast sound. It was a part of our sound that we wouldn't really give it away. But we would give it to Tion because she was a part of the crew like that. Yeah. 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 Tall boy.